This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Rock and Roll's driving, pounding vibrations reverberated against the segregated streets of New Orleans, Memphis, and Chicago. It came in the midnight hour, uninvited, and although criticized as being devil's music, Rock preached its gospel of sex and rebellion. Rock, the new opium of the masses, was about to transform the world. During the riptide of the 1950s, the insistent cries of seminal rockers, Chuck Berry, Elvis Presley, and Little Richard, ignited a social upheaval among the teen masses. Rock scripted the songbook for a generation of youth hungry for Maslowian connection and group identity. The music reverberated through plastic earphones, secretly plugged into a seafoam green or bright red Zenith Royal 500 pocket transistor radio, educating American teens in tiny two-minute assaults. Joe Nardone's All-Stars, considered to be the first rock and roll band to perform in the Wilkes-Barre Valley, surged upon that riptide. First, they played the Catholic Youth Center, Grenada Ballroom, and then, like stormtroopers, commandeered the San Sushi Ballroom. The band featured Bill Brown, lead vocalist, Leo Lefty Harkins, lead guitar, Glenn Johnson, drums, Joe Nardone, vocals and sax, Carl Swinsky, keyboards, and then Pete Urchak. The four stars, Joe Nardone's first band, were formed at Coughlin High School. They became the All-Stars and, in 1958, played their first gig at the Wilkes-Barre CYC and were the first rock band to play at Sandy Beach at Harvey's Lake. Nardone left the group in 1973. In 1991, Bob Griziek stepped in on bass. Before that, the band had a specifically designed electronic rig to pull bass out of the electric piano, Nardone told columnist Jerry Kishbaugh. Griziek contributed driving bass lines, rhythmically aligned with Glenn Johnson's beat, adding another dimension to the band. Said Griziek, the bass guitar added a lot more bottom because I played a five-string bass, so I had the extra octave on the bottom with the low B. That added quite a bit. It gave it the same feel that Joe had at Susie because he was using piano bass at Susie and or organ bass on some of the records.